We live as beings that don't just sort of move through the world ethereally. We, you know, we touch the mud, we dig in the chemicals, we try to, you know, understand what's inside of things. Um, we really want to grapple with the world. And I think both religion and science are ways of, of doing that. Walter Burkhardt, who was a philosopher and a Jesuit, talked about um, contemplation as a long, loving look at the real. And what else is science but a passionate look at the real, right? So to me, it feels like all these religious traditions that have contemplation at their roots, so Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hindu, Zen, Buddhism, they all have this real deep, desire to look closely and lovingly at the real. And that, so that must be a human thing. Um, and so for me, at least, the entrance that I would give people from science to religion is that they're both trying to contemplate what's before us, the real. The created world is the only thing we have to look at, right? Aside from mystical experiences, which I'm going to put off the, off the plate, what we have to look at is the real world. I grew up in an atmosphere of everything was okay to question um, and spirited conversation about things religious, things scientific, were all part of the game. I grew up with two parents who were scientists. I lived behind the Catholic convent with an order of nuns who were very academic. I think it was Chesterton who said that, you know, if you want to um, avoid being challenged, you have to choose your reading very carefully. Um, and he was thinking again about this tension between believing in God and not believing in God. And so I didn't choose my reading particularly carefully. So by the time I was in high school, I was aware that some people thought that, you know, science precluded any involvement in religion, and that religion precluded your ability to do science. That you meant you couldn't believe in evolution, climate change wasn't a thing then, that tells you how old I am. Um, but that, you know, and you had to believe the world was created in seven days, um, you know, something that already made me kind of blink, because if you look in the book of Genesis, there are two different accounts of creation, and they themselves are not consistent with each other. So how can anyone imagine that the Bible is sort of a science book, right? You have already two theories going. There's one where Adam is created, and then God says, oh, you need a companion, creates all these animals, and finally says, oh, you need Eve, created out of Adam. So there's that sort of subordination there. And then you have a whole separate story where Adam and Eve are just created together out of the stuff of the earth, um, which gives you a totally different picture about the relationship between men and women, right? And those are two stories that are within, you know, a few pages of each other in people's Bibles. Most people don't really think about the fact that they're there. You know, I was aware that there's a tension, and, and I'm aware that people read religion as a way of saying you can't be scientific. You know, do I think that when I'm backed into the wall and I, we can't understand it yet with scientific terms, do I just say, well, it must be a miracle God did it that way, the sort of God of the gaps? But to me, I don't think God violates the rules, right? That's not part of the game. And so I can't just say, well, when I don't understand how it is that electron-electron correlation works, I can't just say, well, it must be God's thing, right? And I'm out of it. I don't have to worry about struggling with the quantum mechanics. But I think that's not, for me, how it works. So to me, God plays a role that sort of feels like, um, you know, sets the universe in motion. Um, I love the, there's an image in Genesis about breathing on the chaos, and I love that image of just sort of, you know, taking a deep breath and blowing and seeing what happens, right? You know, and out of this we get evolution, out of this we get the cosmos, out of this we get the Big Bang, um, and physics works the way it works. So I guess for me, science is a religious experience, right? I look at it and I think this is just amazing and fantastic and isn't the creative world a fantastic place? Scientists, whether they want to call themselves or not, really are contemplatives in the same way that a Zen Buddhist is a contemplative and a Carthusian monk is a contemplative.
There's a book called Care of the Soul by Thomas More, um, who's a psychologist, but who was a monk first. And he talks about multiple readings of the world. So if you're reading a text, you often read multiple readings into it. You know, there's a subtext, there's sometimes inside jokes, um, there's more there than just the words, right? And I find that an intriguing sense of the world that, you know, I can read the quantum mechanics as being, you know, this, um, but I might also read on top of it um, a way to open questions into contemplation or open questions for me about, you know, how I am particularly living in this moment in this place. And so, I mean, and certainly quantum mechanics, you have to live with multiple interpretations, right? Electrons behave in some ways like a particle, in some ways like a wave, and each of those, you have to hold on to those realities simultaneously, and you can't cling to one too hard. If you really think of the electron as a particle, suddenly you start seeing little Bohr orbits and you've lost a whole sense of the reality of things. And if you hold too tight to it as a wave, you miss other things about it as well.